What is up, YouTube? That's here today. I'm back playing more Pokemon VDC 2023 Regulation C content, and today I'm super excited to get into today's team building video. Today we're going to be taking a team that excels in a best of one closed team sheet situation, similar to how the ranked ladder works, and making it shine in a best of three open team sheet situation, similar to how tournaments work. The person that submitted this team on Patreon, their name is Chalda. We can check out their official submission post right here. And uh, they got ranked 25 in the ladder with this team. And this team does excel on the ladder. It has all the tools. It bluffs all the right danger levels. And it's great for ladder play. But I do think that they're going to struggle taking this team to a best of three open team sheet tournament. Because all the little things that they're cutting to make work on the ladder and optimize for the ladder. Your opponent can see that in the open team sheet best of three. So things like, for example, if we take a look at this Mimikyu not having protect it's going to be really easy to just double into that Mimikyu whenever you feel like it. This entity having Fairy Terra and not having access to Protect again makes it really, really hard to pin. This Torkoal not being Specs or having Ground Coverage makes it really, really easy to abuse the Torkoal. The Hands not having Fake Up, for example. These are all really, really good examples of things that work great when it's closed team sheet and how Pokemon used to work. But now with open team sheet, you got to actually be able to follow through on your danger levels and your bluffs. So what we're going to be doing is fleshing out this team a lot more, giving it the tools that it needs to succeed in best of three situation. And at the end of the team fixing, what we're going to do is we're going to break down all of the flow charts that this team has, ranking them into tiers, S through F, ranking every single lead combination, trying to find strengths that each combination can bring to the table. Because I think Trick Room is a really good example of a team that struggles in a best of three setting, which is why, especially in this format, um, and that we don't really see that many at tournament play right now. You know, take a look at like, you know, Hartford Regionals, Portland Regionals. There weren't that many Trick Room teams because it's really easy to win one game in any best of three of the Trick Room team. You can always win one, but because your uh, win condition is so heavily rooted in using Trick Room, it's hard to replicate those wins. And opponents don't lose the same way in games two and three if they're good opponents. So you need to find other ways to win that aren't just redirection, trick room, win with Torkoal, because that's only going to work once, right? And you have to know when to use those leads, when to get that up, and you actually need to understand what to do in games two and three. So hopefully I'll be able to better explain that near the middle to end of the video. And if you guys like that little section where I break down the lead flow charts, let me know in the comments. We're trying to get every single video to 100 likes as well. And without further ado, let's just hop into it. What we're gonna do? What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by playing a few ranked games on the actual ladder, just to get a better understanding of how this team works and explain, um, you know, what the, what some of the lead options are before breaking down all of the EVs, changing a bunch of the items, and explaining what I think the team should do moving forward. So, without further ado, let's just get right on into it. Wish me luck. Here we go. Holy moly, is that a Lucario? Dude, they're busting out the Lucario Shimpow Dragonite. Cool, that's a good match for TR. We just have to make sure that we're underspeeding that Amoongus. What are the Terras? Are we Fire Terra Hands or Grass? We are Grass. Cool, so we can always Grass Terra Hands in front of Amoongus to be able to box spores as well. Um, I think realistically, this is where something like Redirection is very, very good. So Entity is a great lead here. It forces those Ice Spinners. Yes, they get to KO the Entity, but then we get to bring out the Torkoal immediately and just win the game. So something like Entity Mimikyu is probably pretty good here. Uh, you don't want to lead like Hands and go for like Fake Outs because the Dragonite could be inner focus. The Shimpow could go Ghost Terra, things like that. Bringing these in the back are probably going to be right. Again, we want to bring Mons that... Um, Amoongus can't just spore, so like Tinglu is cool in theory, but it just doesn't really work because we set the trick room, we bring the Tinglu out, and then they just spore us, and then we waste all our turns. So this is, you're already starting to see like a little bit of a pattern in the like things like Tinglu and Bronzlong aren't really clashing with what we need the team to do. And so instead of having a little weakness policy combo that features them, we'd probably be better off just heightening the effectiveness of the Pokemon that we already have. So let's just go into it and see what we get away with in this first game. They have a lot of AoE damage from the Flutter, especially if they get like a Protosynthesis boost and like special attack and they're potentially spexed. But that's one of the reasons why we're going like redirection with Mimikyu. Mimikyu's such a good mod in this format for being able to get that Trick Room up. I think the only thing they really have that can stop this, because we also have Safety Guy with Mimikyu, would be something like an Imprisoned TR. They shouldn't actually have a way to get this off the board. I don't know as well. Let me check your Entity Terra. Your Entity should usually be Ghost Terra on these sort of teams. I know you're using a Fairy Terra one. Ghost Terra blocks a couple different things. If they get rid of your terrains, it lets you block, um, you know, a bunch of like E-Speeds and stuff like that. Um, but also like it lets you avoid like Pop Bomb from Mousehold and then final gamuts from things like Lucario's and Annihilates. I think Entity has a higher base HP than Lucario. No, it doesn't. It doesn't actually. 
Yeah, we're still gonna go for it. We still just go for the follow me here. But Ghost Terra Indity would for sure get this up. If they were to final gambit our Indity and then Iron Head flinch our Mimikyu, they would be able to deny our Trick Room for at least one turn. I also think that like stuff like Sword Stance doesn't realistically help in a best of three like open team sheet situation. But that's just me. Another thing that we could do here is if like Protect here would be the one that we really want to show an open team sheet because we'd be able to bluff and see like which one of these is uh, trick rooming, which one of these is protecting, which one of these is doing whatever. Uh, it's going to be uh, Moongus, right? They're getting ready for trick room probably. That's what I'm assuming. Or Dragonite? Amoongus. Awesome. So it's going absolutely what we want to happen. We would like to lose any of this turn to be able to bring out our Torkoal. Yes, that's so good for us. It's going exactly how I want this to go. Perfect. Cool. So they're, they're ready for Trick Room. I'm assuming that they have the Water Terra on the Amoongus. And let's think about what we actually want to get done with this Mimikyu. We have Fire Terra. We have Player Off and Shadow Claw. I wonder if like a Shadow Claw crit would KO that Amoongus. I'm sure that they're going to Water Terra it. But they can only Terra Astalize with one of these Pokemon. We don't actually have to Trastalize the Torkoal here. I think that it's nice. I also think that we don't really need Clear Smog. Like, what's Clear Smog for? Like, Dozo? If they can see it coming, that's a big thing with this team. If they can see the fact we have Clear Smog, if they can see the fact we have Covert Cloak, Sword Stance, all these things, it takes away from the effectiveness in an open team sheet setting. So, I'm going to go for the Eruption. They can only Trastalize one. This is where Sword Stance is probably a good option. But, like, eh. I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling... I'm feeling Shadow Claw right now. Remember, they also have the Lucario in the back. We don't need Sword Stance to break those sort of things. We'd, I'd like to just get the Amoongus off the board. And we don't need to waste any of our Terras right here. So let's see what happens. King Gambit's going to trash us. Now remember, Torkoal is using Eruption. This will probably KO the Amoongus if it's not protecting. And then we get to go into the King Gambit slot, which is Fire Tearing with that big Shadow Claw. Unless it's Protect Amoongus. That's such a cool play. That's a, that's a very, very, very passive play from our opponent. Wow, I can't believe they're going that passive. Yeah, you normally you think they would just go for the spore, but it's all right. Good thing we didn't waste our terror on the Torkoal. It's good damage on King Gambit, even though they're probably vested. And Cortic weaving the cork and the Torkoal, right? It's decent damage. Ugh. So let's think about what we need to do here. I think we're actually are gonna have to go fire Terra. I don't really want to, but we still need that damage on the Amoongus. We have to get the Amoongus off the board. And let's just go for the Shadow Claw into here. The, the, um, what is it? The King Gambit shouldn't be able to protect. It's most likely vested. Hey, but that's a, that's a good play. Normally people would just be like, yo, I can go Water Terra. Moongus, so it tells me that they don't have Water Terra. They probably have some other weird defensive Terra. Maybe something like, I don't know, like a flying or something weird like that. Maybe a dark, something that doesn't resist fire. And that's why they have to go for the protect instead, which means they might actually switch the Amoongus out because they don't want to lose it. We could also realistically just click like flamethrower in the Amoongus slot and not have to waste our Terra. I still think we can get the KO with this fire Terra here. And I don't think we had to do that last turn. I think that we did a really good play last turn. And they just had the perfect Terra to punish. I don't think fire Terra King Gambit's very common. Most people like to go flying. But it makes sense on this team. There's no Earthquake users. So hopefully we can still KO this Amoongus and not have to eat a Spore. Eruption. This is still going to do a lot of damage. We have the Sun. We got a Charcoal. Okay, that's, that's still, that was actually really close that we got the KO. Like, I, the more that I thought about it, I was like, oh, that might not KO. But, you know, we take those wins. Uh, Moongus goes down, that's huge. Corto Cleave into Don't Care the Slot. Remember, next turn we can just start using Flamethrower, which is great. They still cannot use things like, um, we get a crit, nice. They cannot use things like Sucker Punch yet because there is still terrain on the board. So we're in a really, really good spot here. And that King Gambit shouldn't be able to protect. We can KO it with a Flamethrower. And let's see what they bring out here. Lucario, we can start play roughing that thing. I think we're okay. I think it's going to be a, a final gamble Lucario, some sort of choice item Lucario. That's what I would assume. So let's see. All right. Lucario. And it's a really good play from them actually to send out Lucario because they've already shown Lucario. If they were to show like Dragonite or something here, we know they don't have any pins like or anything to go into. They don't have any other good pivots. They're probably using Lucario's bait here to pivot into Dragonite for like a big, uh, you know, defensive play. Good thing is like all those mods are basically weak to... Um, they're basically weak to uh, play rough, or at least take neutral damage from it. So Dragonite, Shen Pao, Flutter, they all take humongous damage from this. Turns on our Trick Room are two more turns, so we should be able to just Flamethrower the King Gambit. And, I mean, realistically, no, I like this. Flamethrower the King Gambit because it's slower than the Mimikyu, and then we just play rough the Lucario. Hopefully the Lucario is slower than Mimikyu, but it doesn't really matter. 
it might be sashed it might not be we're gonna see there's the pivot just like i said so we're able to see that coming but they don't have the defensive tools to be able to swap it on anything that wouldn't take a ton of damage from this like flutter main's probably gonna go down to this if we hit flutter main boosts into speed as well holy moly so flamethrower ko's the king gambit and let's see if this is like sash flutter main i guess i could have shadow clawed but i i think that like adamant mimikyu or brave mimikyu sorry um player up just does a lot here if we hit this i'm feeling a miss here <laughs> that's so much damage that's great so there's still one more turn trick room left we can actually finish that off with eruption so next turn we will eruption um just to be able to do that little bit of damage break potential sash lucario and you can see like you can see how much thought goes into like setting up these pins and stuff like that and seeing what pokemon they bring out and knowing what pokemon they have to have in the back based off the pokemon that they show early uh, Pokemon's such a deep game. It's such a deep game. So, Eruption's gonna be able to KO the Flutter. This is their last turn, and I don't think that Lucario has a, uh, I, I think I bet we can Shadow Claw here. It's neutral, plus the Eruption. We'll take it out for sure. They already tear it. That Lucario can't have Protect. It's, it can't. Like, it's, it's pivoted twice. And, uh, we should be able to get this. The Flutter might be able to Protect, but then it can't actually do anything. It didn't even break our Mimikyu this game. And I think they had a good team. Yeah, they just, they just take the Scoop. That's probably, like, a Specs Flutter plus like a Scarf Lucario is what I'm assuming here. And we'll take those wins in game one. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what this is. It's a Stantler over there with a Pin Kirchin. Oh my gosh, this is fine. We can just get a Trick Room, but like what a weird game. Um, there's two or three different flow charts we can do here. And I actually am a pretty big fan of going like Mimikyu Torkoal. You go Mimikyu Torkoal. And the reason why I like leading Torkoal here is because if they lead Obama Snow and we lead, Tor we lead Torkoal, they activate their hail because they're faster. We activate the sun. We can just go to tech trick room and we're good to go. And then we just win with Torkoal. Or we can just pivot out the Torkoal for something else. We can bring the iron hands here. It's just a decent mom. We can capitalize on the fact that they're probably going to give us a cork drive boost. And then I think there's nothing wrong with Inity as a secondary late game trick room setter. It's also a decent pivot. I don't think you want to bring Ting Lu to this matchup because it kind of shoots our own Torkoal in the foot. And, uh... Yeah, and he's just a solid mon for me to grind out like things like the Obama Snow, things like that Iron Moth, and things like the Iron Bundle. So, and the Iron Hands, like their whole team's just weak to Indy. So, like, Indy's actually a good mon. I would also recommend like putting a little bit of special attack in the Indy if you could. It's not weak, especially with that Psychic Terrain boost. And it's great for just like messing up things that have like really, really low spa death or have a weakness to Psychic or Fairy, you know, but you can just put Dazzling on that thing too. So, let's see what they want to do. Bundle hands, so there's no torque, there's no uh, Obama Snow here yet. So because we don't see Obama Snow, that means they can switch it in. So they can go for like a fake out into our Torkoal. They can double into our Mimikyu. I actually would really think that they might double into the Mimikyu here. So this is where if I had this team the way I would, I would protect Mimikyu this turn, knowing they were going to double into it with like a, you know, Icy Wind and like a random attack. And then I would just go for the absolutely massive eruption in both those guys. That being said, uh, I'm going to play this the way the team is submitted, and I'm just going to try and Trick Room here and just go for a Protect, because there's a good chance that they just swap out hands for a Bomb Snow and go for a Hydro Bump into the Torkoal. And that's what they're doing here. Cool. And the thing is, they're like, yes, I got up my, my Hail, right? I got rid of your Sun, but like, I don't need Sun to like one-shot both of those Pokemon. They're like, what? No way. There's no way to click Wizard. It's Hydro, right? It has to be Hydro. Blizzard. Oh, dude, they clicked the raw blizzard. Can you not freeze my Mimikyu, please? Please? I I'm asking nicely right now. I'm asking so nicely. I'm being so nice right now. Cool, it's Orb Bundle. That's unique. <laughs> Don't think I've seen that one before. So it could be Sash Obama Snow. Definitely could be. Um, we can just go with Shadow Claw in that same slot. Just pop the eruption. Easy, easy, lemon squeezy. Look at that boy, look at that Torkoal. So yeah, Torkoal's really, really good. I think Torkoal's underrated in like best of three. It's, it's the matchup that like everyone doesn't want to fight. It's a super hard trick matchup, but we need to solidify our defensive options, especially on our lead flow charts. We're working on that after this game, after we do a little bit of team fixing. And I really hope you guys like the next sections coming up. They can go for the Protect, all they want. We're doubling into the Obama Snow. Um, obviously, Obama Snow is going to... Well, their Obama Snow might be faster than this Mimikyu set. It might, it might have some speed investment. If it's a full speed Obama Snow, like a Sash set, uh, we will underspeed them. Oh, they're just gone. Doesn't matter. So they can totally send out their hands here and go for a fake out into the Torkoal. Um, if they were to do that, this is where a really good play would be something like a double protect. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I think what I'm going to do here is if they do end up making that play, I might just swap out the Mimikyu for a 
Indity, set the terrain to block the fake out, go for a double eruption, probably go fire terror this turn, and uh, do about half to the hands, put it within range of a second eruption and or a psychic from the Indity, and just basically win the game. So we're in a good spot here. There's the hands. You can see how there's all this stuff set up based off the leads, based off like what information they're showing. I'm assuming the last Mon is probably Moth. It shouldn't be Pincurchin. Like I probably would have brought Pincurchin, but it's probably uh probably Pin it's probably Moth here. Um, so you swap in the Entity, get the train up so block the fake out, and then you just absolutely pop off with the Torkoal and you win the game. And now this this sort of team actually plays very very well into a closed team sheet. Remember on the submission post they said they really want to play best of three open team sheet. It's so much harder. There's so many things we're gonna have to like fine tune to make it good for a best of three. Especially in that open team sheet format, because this team cuts so many liberties like without its protects that we're gonna have to add those back on and bluff a little bit better than what the team does right now. But let's see if they go for the fake out. Again, in an open team sheet, you know, they might not even have fake out. We'd be able to see it coming. We wouldn't even have to make this play. But uh, let's see what they do here. Their hands is going to take a lot of damage from this eruption. It's not sun boosted, but like, oh, Terasta. I was going to say, like, is there any world where they go like fire Terra bundle? <laughs> oh my god, no way. Water? Ice. Dude, you're gone. You are so gone. I don't know what you thought was going to happen here. I don't know what you thought was going to happen here. But I think, yeah, there's a fake out, blocking it up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Big damage next turn because the hand's wasted its attack there. We just get a double tap with eruption. And we can even go helping hand eruption if we want to. Look at that, right in the halfway mark on that hands. And it's perfect, you know, it's absolutely perfect. Like, games like this, like Trick Room is one of those teams like I was talking about that gets so much better in a closed team sheet best of one format. And I will say... Trick Room can always win one game in the best of three, but it's all about diversifying your flow charts. They did bring Pink Archon, which is the right choice, and understanding what you need to do to close out games two and three. So what we're going to do after this is we're going to break down all of our lead optimizations, break them down into different tiers of like S tier leads, A tier leads, B tier, C tier, flow chart every single lead this team can do to give you some ideas of what you can do after winning or losing in game one to win in games two and three. That's the most important thing. And playing Trick Room correctly is understanding how to make that work. We're just going to go over the follow me just in case because Pinkurchin can underspeed Torkoal in some situations. And uh, then we just win. Because they can still Hydro Pump. Like, I want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with Hydro Pump Pinkurchin. Not today. Not in my house. So follow me up. And that is that flow chart section of the video that I was talking about earlier. Discharge. He'll go nuts. So I told you, they did underspeed. Good play going for that AoE damage. Let's see if they... Let's see how much damage we take. That's not going to be enough. Any Paras? No. Look at this damage. Do we still, like, Oko this? We don't have Sun, but, like, this is still going to do a lot. Well, let's go. That's a lot. That's AV Pinkurchin, then? It looks to be... Oh, it's Air Balloon Dub. It's just Heavy Spadef. Just Heavy Spadef. All right, if they're going to play it like that, we just do this. We just go Helping Hand and Erupt again. We should be able to take out the hands here after the second Discharge. Let's see, though, if they get a full Para. We could just technically click Psychic into the hands, too, but, like, I think this is fine. Helping Hand's going to be enough damage. I think we could also just go click Flamethrower, I guess. Might have been a little bit of a sloppy play here, but I just want to see how much damage we do here. Eruption. Helping Hand. Big damage. Fire Terra. Oh my gosh. Pinkurchin hanging on by a literal thread out here. Pinkurchin's not a bad Pokemon. It's not. It's really not. Electric Terrain is valuable. Even just manually setting Electric Terrain for all the good Quark Drive bonds is just a good play sometimes. Just going to go for Psychics and... Uh, Another one of those. Don't have to show that we're not uh, choiced. So, battle's canceled. So, we did win two games, but like I said, it's a lot easier to win games on the best of one closed ladder team sheet. Or closed closed ladder, right? Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the rental code one more time, and then we're going to go fix a lot of the EVs, a lot of the items, moveset choices, and the Pokemon. And then we're going to break down, like I was talking about, all the little things you want to do to optimize for best of three. Is that a rage quit that they did at the end? Yeah, we take those all the way to the bank. <laughs> all right, so those were two really, really good example games of how the team needs to be played to win if you just want to go, like, redirection Trick Room. But like I mentioned earlier, that only really works once. You know, after you win that one game by saying, okay, I'm going to go redirection Trick Room, and you kind of show what your EVs are and how defensive or how aggressive you are, people make changes, they optimize things, and then... You basically just lose game two trying the same thing again. And then in game three, you're the one that's stuck on the back foot because your redirection trick team doesn't work anymore. And this team has like no other way to do it, right? There's no fake out on the hands. Uh, Ting Lu only stops like special attacks. And even when you do that, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. So what we need to be doing here is changing a lot of the Pokemon to better 
give ourselves games two and three win conditions, right? The first thing I think that we're going to want to do is take a look at this Patreon team's mission post again, right? And uh, just go over a little bit about what the team says that they want to use it for. So they got ranked 25 on the ladder with it. You can see why. We won both games very, very easily uh, by bluffing the right danger levels, bluffing like fake out with hands, being able to weave the entity in the back. And it's just a super, super good team for the ranked ladder. But they want to use it in best of three, and they have the most fun playing best of three tournaments, whether they're online in person. They have local on Saturday. We're going to try and get the team done before then. So if we take a look at like all the... I already read through all this. Um, basically, they did a really, really good job understanding what all the roles of these Pokemon are. But if you actually go down here, it's like they can see that Bronzong is where they struggle the most. And they... They, I feel like I, I agree with them. Bronzong is a little bit of a weird enigma in this team. If we take a look at like the actual uh, Poke Paste over here, let's make this just a little bit bigger. Um, we can see like this whole Covert Cloak Bulldoze Bronzong next to like Weakness Policy Poison Team Lou. They can see that in the team preview. That's not going to work. Like they'll just KO your Bronzong. Your Bronzong also like doesn't have Protect. Like they can just lead Fluttermane and like another aggressive Mon. They see your Fire Terror and they go with two neutral moves. Your Bronzong's gone, your team lose Protects on cooldown, and then you, the game's over. So what we need to actually do, in my opinion, is flesh out some of the other Mons in the team. I actually think we should cut the Bronzong and Ting Lu, just because any good player that's going to be at like a tournament, they're not going to lose to that. And I realistically think what you need to be doing is giving yourself more options to say, hey, I'm more than just the Mimikyu weed. I'm more than just Entity. I'm more than just winning the game with Torkoal. Force your opponent to win in other ways than what is easiest for them to do. Even if they have like weeds that they could go to punish you in certain situations, force them to do that and they might fumble the bag a little bit. So what I think we should do is think about what mons we want to keep. I think that we already talked a little bit about keeping these four and I think the Ting Lu and the bronze are definitely going to be things that we can cut. I'm going to move some of my... Ah, did I just like break everything? I'm going to move this thing over here. And I'm going to move this over here. It's just stuff that I'm doing on my uh, wallpaper over here. All right, and we're going to get into it. So I do think that... Uh, Mimikyu, Entity are really good. Hands and Torkoal are good. But I actually think that if you're going to be playing Trick Room in a regional level, you definitely need to have an Armor Rouge. You definitely uh, need to have this Pokemon. Just because Armor Rouge has that Flash Fire ability, which is really, really good against those Trick Room teams, against those other Torkoal teams. And Armor Rouge is the damage, right? It's damage other than Torkoal. Because you saw in one of the games, they actually just went with the King Gambit. They Fire Terrored, and it was actually really hard for us to break that. If we had Armor Rouge in the back, cool, we could, we could have just fought a piece, brought out the Armor Rouge, and just started expanding forcing them in the face because they already Fire Terrored away. So I think Armor Rouge is a great pair with Torkoal because things that, you know, block the expanding force like Dark Types and Steel Types, for example, they take really good damage from Eruption. And, and things that block the Eruption, you know, like Water Types, Dragon Types, and Fire Types, they take really big damage from Armor Rouge. So these two go very, very well together. And you kind of need to have the Armor Rouge to make most Trick Room cores work in the current meta, in my opinion. Also, having more potential Trick Room setters is always a good thing. You want to have Trick Room setters that have, that have different weaknesses, resistances, and offensive and defensive typing, and that's the key to making Trick Room work in a best of three. And I think the last Pokemon that you're going to want to add in this exact situation is going to be one that is a secondary form of redirection and a secondary win condition altogether, and that's going to be Amoongus. Amoongus is very, very good on this team. Now, you could technically put a Brute Bonnet here, and a lot of people would like the Brute Bonnet. Not a fan of the Brute Bonnet for a few reasons we'll list a little bit later, but remember what I've talked about a lot of times in other videos. When you're trying to flesh out a team for like a tournament setting, you don't want to have one Mon have to do all the heavy lifting. For example, if we're leading with like Mimikyu and Entity and Entity is our only redirection Mon and they have something that 1000% checks this Entity, after game one, we're kind of boned if Entity is like a main part of our strategy. But stuff that works versus Entity doesn't always work against Amoongus and stuff that works against Amoongus doesn't always work against Entity. And if Amoongus is a vital part of our strategy, this will force our opponent to bring things that have safety goggles, grass terras, those type of Pokemon don't have the right items if we don't bring the Amoongus and their grass terras don't do anything against like Armory and Torkoal. So Amoongus is the right mon that conditions our opponent to bring what we want them to bring, but also Amoongus is a great mid to late game situation to come in spore threats in trick room so you can actually defensive pivot and get up those mid to late game second or third trick rooms that you need to succeed in a best of three setting so hopefully you like these little changes here but we're definitely going to still do a lot more um we're going to take a look at some of the moves and some of the mons and optimize all of our items in our evs because i think there definitely still is a lot of work that needs to be done in the EV department as well as the moves so we're going to do the moves first i definitely think in a best of three open team cheat setting you're going to need protect you need protect because in game one, it doesn't really matter. And on ladder, it doesn't really matter because there's only one game. But in game two, one thing you can do is like if you lead Mimikyu Entity and in game one, you were to go with like redirection trick room, 
they're like, cool, uh, and, and you win, right? That's great. But in game two, you can go like, protect Mimikyu, trick room Entity. Or in game three, you can go protect Entity, trick room Mimikyu. And then you get to save your Entity to be able to do cool stuff. So I actually think it's really, really nice to be able to have these protects here. And it forces your opponent to actually think a lot more about every single turn. Also, it's very good in those mid to late game situations where you can protect uh, to be able to elongate their presence on the board. So then they can trick room after uh, for like on the third and fourth turns of Trick Room, you can also go for like double Trick Rooms and stuff like that. But I definitely do think that the protects on these Pokemon are very pivotal in making sure your opponent respects them correctly. If you don't have these protects, you're not going to be able to actually get up your Trick Rooms in a lot of situations. So really, really important that you keep these protects. I would highly, highly recommend it. And being able to protect bait them into over committing on certain spots is how and, and punishing them with your teammate is how you're going to be able to get those wins in games two and three. So it sucks not having Swords Dance, but like they'd be able to see on the team preview, so you wouldn't actually be able to get anything out of it anyways. So putting Protect in there is going to be very good. I think you need to follow me. I think you need the Trick Room still. You're good to go. Um, Iron Hands. you got to be able to actually follow through on your Fake Out potential. Like the reason Hands works on Ladder is because like they see that you have Hands and they're scared of the Fake Out. And you may be thinking, why did I Fake Out if I have Entity? Well, you just don't do both, right? Um, the big thing about Trick Room, right? So let's say in like game one, you go like, redirection trick room game two you can go with a fake out trick room and make it just a little bit faster and save your torque on the back right in game three you can go back to redirection trick room or you can go fake out trick room they don't know which ones it's going to be right so they you can go so many different things you can go with a double trick room you can go like mimic you arm rouge and say like which one of these is trick room and you don't know i'm getting it up and so do you see how you're the one dictating play by having the ability to follow through on your bluffs without fake out you can't get away with that so you definitely still need the fake out here. What I would recommend is fake out, drain punch, thunder punch. I like the thunder punch over the uh, over the wild charge. And I actually just go uh, volt switch here. To be able to help you pivot just a little bit better, um, what I like doing in a lot of situations is going like hands, in like a game three situation, it's, it's especially good. You go like hands, um, trick room setter, like Mimikyu, a very safe one. And you just go like, you force their mon to protect to be able to block the fake out or they, you know they're pivoting away or something like that, you Volt Switch to break Sash, do a little bit of damage, and then you're able to bring in your Torkoal safe. You're able to soak the damage with hands if they did attack, and then you're able to get your Torkoal in immediately, or your Armor Rouge in immediately, and it's really, really good. You're also able to Volt Switch to be able to reset your Fake Out pin. So I think hands is with the, with the Volt Switch is very good. We'd probably be changing this to an AV set. As for the Torkoal, you don't really need Clear Smog. Let's think about what Clear Smog's for. Is it for Dozo? Dozo's common uh, Terra type is Steel, right? And so if they're... they're and, and against anything against Dozo, you just spore it, right? And if they're Grass Terra Dozo, well, then you just eruption them and you win the game. So you don't actually need Clear Smog. If anything, I think you'd want, like, Earth Power or... You'd want Earth Power, Heat Wave. Um, you could go with Solar Beam. I, I like Earth Power here. Um, I'm not going to lie. I actually just think you should make this guy Specs. Um, and I, I just think that Specs Torkoal is still really good. Because you don't have... To, it's not 100% up to Torkoal to win now because you have Armor Rouge as a teammate. So, like, I'm not going to lie... I'd still make this Specs. I think Specs Torkoal is still viable. And then that way you can put Solar Beam, um, Solar Beam and uh, Earth Power here. That's what I would do. As for the Armor Rouge, I think there's like three or four different Armor Rouge sets you can run. They all run Trick Room, obviously. But you can run things like, obviously, Expanding Force. And I like Heat Wave over... Um, over armor cannon uh that's just my opinion i think I've, i think you get way more value of heat wave being able to like speed up games a lot break sashes and catch pins like catch them switching in with teammates and stuff like that heat wave's fine you can go aura sphere if you want or energy ball and there's nothing wrong with that i like protect here though i like protect here we'll talk about why in just a moment and and as for the amoongus uh we're probably gonna go citrus on the amoongus you can also go with like a uh speed reducing item like a power band or something like that to be able to lower your speed to make sure you underspeed other torquals if other trick room teams are problematic but we'll be able to deal with that with armor so we actually don't have to care so we for among us we definitely want like protect we would want rage powder uh we would want spore right and so most people here would go with pollen puff and that's fine pollen puff's good here um i would say if you don't think you're gonna be able to get Pollen Puff off. There's actually nothing wrong with like a Giga Drain or like a Leaf Storm or even like a, a Clear Smog there if you felt like it. But I think we're gonna be able to Pollen Puff our Torkoal, Pollen Puff our Hands. There are good Pollen Puff targets on this team. So uh, it's good. I also think that there's, it's weird. You may be thinking, all right, well, we want Regenerator, right? 
this team doesn't actually need to be switching a lot. So Effect Spore might be the better ability in this situation. Being able to redirect, fish for those sleeps that way, fish for those poisons that way to speed up games. It's creating things like Shem Pows and Dragonites. So I actually would keep the Effect Spore um, and I would make my EV sped, spread uh, able to better redirect physical moves and stuff like that. You can also go with a Rocky Helmet here to be able to speed up those games, but I like the Citrus um, against those like Dragonite Shem Pow matchups. So now that that's done, let's take a look at some of our EVs. We don't need to work on Terras yet. Mimikyu is a bit of a weird mon. Um, there's nothing wrong with this EV spread. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, but I do think that it's aggressive. It's needlessly aggressive. Um, let's see, what would we want to change about this Mimikyu? There's something really wrong with the Mimikyu set. I like the Shadow Claw, I like the player off, Trick Room Protect. Like, it's, it's a good set. Um, we would probably, if anything, just want our four here. You can probably take some out into bulk on this Mimikyu. Like, you can take some of this attack out, but whenever you already get the Trick Room up, you always want just a little bit more attack with Mimikyu. So I totally understand this set, and it does work. Uh, you want to be as slow as possible with this guy, and, you know, it is what it is. With the Entity, though, you do want to put a little bit of points in speed. I would say 12 is a good number to have, and so you can actually just, like, pot shot things like Rotoms, Azumarils, those Pokemon that, like, are really hard for, like, Torkoal and Armors to get off the board. You can just hit those things with Psychic, and you're not, like, a slow Mon in the Entity. This also makes it so you don't have to run, like, a speed reduce set. And then, like, from there... You can flesh this out a little bit more. If you were to go to 196 here, you get the bump on your seed. Um, but that's a we don't even know if we want to run seed because like Sash might be better. Sash might actually just be a better item on this Pokemon. We're not running a Sash, and I think it's like criminal. Do you, anytime you'd ever want to run a defensive item like this and you're not running a Sash, it's not great. I think you should always have that Sash. Another thing you could even do with this Entity if you wanted to, because we're not using a Sash, we could go something like Sash here, and it's so good. It's just so free. Um, and then we would actually, would we probably cut the Protect there for Dazzling Gleam and make this set into just a Sweeper set, where we actually went like this. And then we'd be much better able to bully the opponents. They don't see our Eevees when they see this. So we can keep the Fairy Terra on this because we have the Sash now, so it doesn't matter if they Final Gambit. Um, but yeah, we're basically going to get everything that we want off this. Let's change our, our levels to level 50 as well. Definitely have to do that when you're making these teams. But yeah, being able to just lead like NDD and be like, yo, I could just hit you in the face, you know? And that's good. Like, that's real good. Like, this is a lot of damage. NDD is not weak. And so just being able to go like, pop. Like, absolutely body them with like, follow me, you know, uh, I like putting my support moves on top. So we would go like, follow me, Trick Room. And then we go Dazzling Gleam and uh, Psychic. We do a lot of damage to things. So like against a Tusk, bro, if they're like Adamant Tusk, they're dead. Like, cause we're timid, right? So you can just one shot their Tusk and then Trick Room with your teammate. Like that's so crazy. I would say just try this because like, even if your entity is fast, once you get Trick Room up, you're still gonna be slower than all their sweepers, right? Um, you're able to be much more of a bully than you would actually believe and you're way bulky than you were before And if anything the fact that like you just get two-shotted means it like it opens up a spot for like hands and torquil and like armor to come in a lot easier As for the hands we want an assault vest here I definitely still like the grass tear on this guy a uh, good move set that we fixed, but you don't need this much HP I would say something like 108 is probably a fine number. Um, there's nothing wrong with a 252 uh, Investment in that slot, but you definitely want to still go adamant nature Something like 8 doesn't get you anything here. Um, I usually like to put about 60 in here. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe like 100. And then we'll just throw the rest in HP. Um, and then I actually like putting 4 points into uh, speed on my hands. Because I like to outspeed other hands. That's just my personal opinion. I think that does work very well. Because um, in Trick Room matchups, you're going to be wanting to bully their hands with things like, you know, Mimikyu, Torkoal, Amoongus, and stuff like that. And... You know, we can pull them outside of Trick Room. So, like, against other Trick Room teams, you see we're making slight adjustments to be able to see if we fight against other Trick Room teams, we force them to have to Trick Room against us, right? So, we're still underspeeding every sweeper team that we're fighting against, but against other Trick Room teams, now we're the bullies, and they have to Trick Room, otherwise we just roll them over. So, it's a really, really good set. And it's very, very bulky. Um, you can put a little bit more in attack if you want, but I just, I don't think you need it. Um, Torkoal. Very, very standard. Uh, you don't really need to make any changes on Torkoal. This is how Torkoal is built, and I think that Specs Torkoal is still really, really good. As for Armourouge, though, there's two ways you can run this. You, got, you can run this guy with a Life Orb or Leftovers, and I think that Leftovers is going to be the better way to do it, and that's another reason why I don't like the Armor Cannon, because it, it makes you lose your... Um, it makes you lose your bulk. 
that we're gonna be going for here. We want Grass Terra on this guy. And we can just go like heavy bulk on this guy. Uh, again, I like putting just a little bit of speed into these guys, just a little bit. Uh, we can then still go with the 252 and we basically just cut this up into like a 236. Remember to spread those four fours out and we go attack reduce nature. You don't actually want to go like speed reduce nature on these guys because you want that attack reduce nature so you take less damage from things like foul play. So I like this, uh, just a very, very standard in in uh, armor rouge. You're able to like weave in those protects every other turn and this guy can set multiple trick rooms over the course of the game. So I like this set a lot. Flash fire is still a really good ability. It covers over the fact that Amoongus has that weakness if they want to overcommit with fire attacks into the Amoongus. Swap right in on that chi, you get that flash fire proc and then you actually will do a lot of damage to the chi with just heat waves you don't need aura spheres or anything like that but if you want to change that you definitely can as for the Amoongus, i like water terra it's best against things like shen pao it's good against torkoals and stuff like that you don't actually need to go full hp investment on Amoongus either you can just go with like 236 because you don't need to get those mentioned returns usually anything over 220 you're going to start getting those a little bit i like heavy uh defense investment on Amoongus's that are built like this with uh basically made to wall like shen pao's and stuff like that and then we want to be speed reduced, zero. So just a standard-ish Amunga set. See, we're not getting any new mission returns that would happen when we double these numbers to our effective HP stats. So this is a pretty standard Amunga set. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at flow charting, which is something I don't think I've actually done in videos, but this is something I do a lot of in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. If you want me to work on this with you in sessions one-on-one -on -one where we build all the teams from scratch, and I explain to you how your leads work and what you need to optimize for games two and three. Think about checking out the Patreon link to that in the description. But we're going to be going into just a document here. And we're going to be writing out, I'm going to move my mic just a little bit. We're going to write down like S, A, you know, B, C, D, F, right? We're going to write down all these different tiers, make these bold so you can see them better. And make it just a little bit bigger, right? And we're going to be writing down every single weed combination that we have. Now, when you're playing with a team like this, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, I can go Entity Mimikyu, I can go Moongus Mimikyu, I can go Entity Armor Rouge, and like those are what you do, right? Because you only really need to play one game with Ladder. But in a best of three, you need to be able to, there's 15, 15 different weed optimization combinations that you can go. And you need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of each one because understanding these things and being familiar with the, the play style that each one brings is what's going to give you those games two and game three changes that you need to go like for example like one of the worst ones is probably something like hands torkel which isn't even bad because there are some situations where they're going to be so tunneled in on trick room where you can just go fake out eruption and win the game right and you need to understand what those are like for example if they go like a support mon uh, something with like a taunt like if their if their option in game two is to taunt you um you can just fake out the other thing the taunt mon's now useless because it's a support mon you just go fake out trick room game over you just won like that you don't even have to set your trick room so understanding where you have advantage where you have disadvantage is going to be very important to winning and so we're just going to talk a little bit about each one of these lead options and get them on paper right what i like to do is for like a game one i like to spend most of my time analyzing the opponent's team sheet so I want to usually just go with an S tier lead for game one. So I can spend most of my time. I, I can just say, I'll just go with one of these. It's fine. Um, and you want to look at their team sheet for like the whole time. No matter how game one goes, you know what you need to go dip into into these like B, C, and D tier leads for game two. Because you know that you're going to be able to win in game three, probably. You don't need to do that immediately. You can save that until their backs to the wall triggering a fight or flight response from your opponent. So let's just talk about these, talk a little bit about them. I would say the most common lead this team can do is in the armor rouge. And so Entity Arma, it's what it is. You know, you just go Redirection Trick Room, got the Expanding Force, pretty standard. They have to dictate a lot of resources to respect this. This is weak against things like Imprison Leads, but overall it's pretty solid lead, especially because we have that Focus Sash Entity, really hard to get that guy off the board. This is also weak to AoE leads. If they have like Dazzling Gleams, Earthquakes, and stuff like that, you're probably going to be hard-pressed to deal with that, but the Armor set that we gave you should be able to eat it pretty well. So pretty good stuff. Um, the Armor is fine. I would say... Uh, uh, Mimikyu, Mimi, and Indity. Just a really, really solid lead as well. Redirection Trick Room, nothing really wrong with that. We're going to have a lot of S tier leads because this team has so many good things. Um, I would say another S tier lead is. Um, it's probably going to be. 
You know, I don't know if like Amoongus is any in any of the S tier leads. It might be. Like Amoongus Mimikyu is really good sometimes. Let's see. We can go hands. I think hands is going to be most of the A tier leads. Because like the S tier leads are like these are the go to's, right? Um, you can see the Indies are already on two of them. Let's see. Nah, let's just let's just go down to the A tier leads. Let's let's flesh it out. There's 15. We there's there's 15 different combinations. So I'm probably gonna have to ask for some help later. <laughs> but let's see. Uh, let's go hands. Uh, there's some there are a couple hands leads. So like hands Mimikyu. So the things that would pin this are you know people that can double up into the Mimikyu, but hands can fake out things. So on the team preview, if you were see if they have like a Ghost Terra, maybe you don't want to go with your hands. But like let's say their options are like King Gambit and like Flutter, you can just lead with like hands in there. You can always fake out into that King Gambit because they can't go Ghost Terra because King Gambits don't usually go Ghost. And then you can just soak the damage from the Flutter. They won't KO anything. You get your Trick Room up. Next turn, you can protect Mimikyu or do whatever you want there. Pivot out your hands with a Volt Switch and a Torkoal and you're absolutely able to win that game. So solid lead. They have to over they have to overextend to beat things like this. And so that's where sometimes a lead like hands Mimikyu can be very, very good. There's gonna be a lot of hands leads in here. Like so like hands, uh, Armourish is very good. Right, you can just same thing, fake out Trick Room, but with a little bit different uh, board state. So in this situation, you can just go Grass Terra, and you can fake out like a different Mon, or you can even go Protect Armourish Volt Switch into your Redirection Mon to go for a turn two Redirection after they've like blown their lead or shown a Terra or done something different. It's a really, really safe way to do it. Uh, you can also lead Hands Armourish, and what, what a lot of people will do is they'll go like Ghost Hair with their Fake Out Mon to like Fake Out your Armor Rouge and avoid your Fake Out to bait you to do that. And so when you see that on the team sheet, what you can do is you can just pivot out your hands to one for Entity, block the Fake Out and just trick him right there and you're good to go and you still have your hands in the back ready to go with Torkoal as well. So more hands leads. Um, so we see hands and um, hands Torkoal is not that great here. Um, hands Entity is also not that great. I would say... The last hands lead that might be viable here. Hands Amoongus is probably more B tier stuff. No, that's probably it for hands in the A tier leads. Let's just get all the hands leads out though. Um, let's go hands. And I, I like hands Amoongus. Um, because you're able to go like fake out Spore into things that you want, into things that aren't threatening your hands, into like a turn to... You're also bluffing, like, Rage Powder. Like, you can go Rage Powder and just, like, pot shot things. So against, like, Sweepers, things like Iron Bundle, this is actually a really, really cool weed because you can just go Protect Amoongus and do whatever you want with your hands because you're not afraid of Bundle with hands. It's a really, really solid weed. It sets up for those really good turn two plays. And I think that's one thing that a lot of players don't think about when they play Trick Room and just teams in general in best of three. Like, what does your turn two look like? You don't need to win the game on the first turn. You want to get your opponent to overextend, lock into those choice items, and punish them correctly so you can understand how to get your trick room up when you need it or your speed control when you need it to win those games. So Hands Amoongus is pretty solid here. Um, hands Torkoal is actually... I'm going to put that in C tier. All right. And just so again, fake out Eruption or, you know, fake out... You can go fake out and then hard switch in your Mimikyu to block them overcommitting on Torkoal or hands like hard switch out for Amoongus to get them to overcommit and break those sashes. So for example, if you know they have like a Dragonite, right, you can, or like a Shen Pao, for example, you can get them to hit that Amoongus slot. Um, and if we're still using the Rocky Helmet or you can just fish for effect spores that way and you can punish with the hands, right? And, you know, if they get the effect spore into poison, break their sash and you finish them off with a Drain Punch, the threat's now gone and you weren't really threatened on the hand slot in that situation. So it's niche but it does work and then the last hands when well, we're going to put it down here in the d tier is going to be hands entity you may be thinking this is really weird because like hands entity you it shuts off your fake out but realistically you still have it's the same type of thing as the amoongus you have the redirection if you need it but also you can just you can still fake out things that are in the air so if you know they're gonna be using a flying type like a dragon that you know is multi-scale you can just fake out that and then entity sash so they can't break it if they have like a shim pal and they have like throat chop you can just fake out that dragonite um, if it's multi-scale, which you can see on the team sheet, and just go with the Trick Room, because Xian Pao cannot one-shot the entity because you have a Sash. So, understanding even how a D-tier lead can dumpster something that you're really, really afraid of dealing with, right? It's really, really good. So, just think about that. Just think about that for future reference, and, uh, you know, we'll get into these. Remember, there's going to be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There's going to be five different leads for each Pokemon. So, let's talk about some of the different uh, Armor Rouge leads. So, we have Armor Rouge right here, Armor Rouge right here. There's going to be three more. Um, I would definitely put Armourouge Amoongus in the A tier. R 
firm. And it's very similar to the Indity, uh, except for it has a little bit more pressure. So if you go redirection trick room, what's really good about that is, yes, you, sorry, you do not have the um, expanding force up, but you have now an Amoongus on the board already in trick room. So you can just go spore, 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 spore. I love Amoongus Armourish versus um, things like Azumarill. I love it versus like Palafins and Palance and stuff like that. It's really, really good. It's also very good against things like Ting Lu's, I've found. Because you can just, if you actually, because you don't need to care, Armourish can just tear a turn one to not really care about the Ting Lu, and you just can go for a turn one spore. And if you go turn one spore instead of having to use the redirection, they get to use their move, it doesn't really do anything, you get the spore, so they have to be asleep next turn. So the next turn, you threaten spore on the other one, you can see if they have protect or not on their team sheet, and you actually swap out your armors for your Torkoal immediately and start abusing your Torkoal one turn after Turkrim goes up. So starting to understand what you want to do on turn two and starting to understand your flowcharts after you get up your speed control is the key to winning these games two and three. So it's still a very, very good lead. Uh, Armor Rouge, uh, Mimikyu, I'm going to put that in B tier because it's a little bit risky. Right? And the value in this lead is like in a game three situation where you really have very little options and you have two bulky mons that can set trick room and they don't know which one it's going to go. So it's a little bit weird. You also can like weave in entity or you can protect with either of these mons now and switch in your redirection. So you're able to see what they have, go for a safe trick room if you need it, but also like pivot in. I also think Armourish Mimikyu is very good against other Trick Room teams because if they were to lead Entity, you can like, cool, I live with my Armourish and my Mimikyu. I can actually just go huge Expanding Force or huge Heat Wave and punish you for trying to set TR. So against like Hatterene leads, against like other Entity leads and stuff like that, it's a very, very aggressive lead that says, I don't need Trick Room, but if you do want to set it, you're going to have to sack them on to do it. And even if you do, I have things like Amoongus and Torkoal in the back, which you would probably bring in the back of this game. So that's going to be one two, three, four. There's one more lead. It's going to be Armourouge Torkoal. And that's going to definitely be down in here. Arma Torkoal. Now, there's not that many things that Arma Torkoal really brings to the table, but it's okay because it's going to set the sun. So what I like this against is teams that want to go like all in. So I like using this against other weather cores. So you can lead to like a Trick Room Setter, and Torkoal. And we're going, to talk about, we're going to talk about that a lot more as we flesh out the other leads. But like basically, you use it to take away their weather. Use it to say you don't have rain this first turn if you lead your Pelipper. You don't have sand this first turn if you lead Titar. So against like Titar Lycanroc, you can lead like Arma Torkoal. It takes away their sand. And you're able to just go um, turn one, fodder, switch out the Torkoal for the Entity. Go for a Trick Room. Go for an Expanding Force. Do whatever you want. And you can always bring that Torkoal back in to regain weather control. Or against like weather teams, this is a very, very solid lead. There are better versions of this that would use like Mimikyu or better versions of this that could even utilize the Indity too, but uh, still a very, very solid lead. So let's start working at some of these Torkoal leads then since we're already talking about Torkoal. Um, I would say one of the better ones is going to be, what that I really like is going to be in the C tier, it's going to be uh, Indity Torkoal. And what I really like about this one is yes you can do that same thing where i talked about like set tr with your entity and pivot out the torkoal for something else like an amoongus for redirection you can even like do a bunch of cool stuff like that or you can just click redirection with like no fake outs because they're psychic terrain and an eruption term one i love stuff like that in game three force your opponent to respect your authority just a little bit if they want to go with like two single target mons or like a passive mon like a support mon or something like that you just go redirection trick room it's so good against things like amoongus like it's it forces their terrace early and so for example if i were to go entity torkoal and they were to like go amoongus that would force them to like low key if first of all they usually don't tear until they like until the trick room goes up so if they don't tear you just go like redirection eruption you're dead entity probably gets spored or gets taken out or whatever it doesn't really matter but like they're gonna get messed up. And if they overcommit and take out that entity, then you can just bring out your armor. And now you have the terrain up, you have the sun up, and you have you go right into what this one looks like, but you already have all the terrain and all the momentum. You've probably already taken out one or two of their mons, which means when you do set your trick room, you're gonna be able to close that game out a lot faster because they don't have all the defensive tools that they would otherwise have. This is great against like uh palance leads as well. Like whenever your opponent like you know they have to swap them on and they can't do that much. Like, for example, when they go like palafin and X, redirect that X and just catch them on coming in off the palafin and just absolutely busted if they come up with the arcanine argon takes like half next turn do it again follow me eruption again it's just easy peasy lemon squeezy good stuff so let's see that's uh that's two of them right so let's see looking at torkoal leads one two three so there's another one somewhere it's gonna be torkoal mimikyu right and i would say torkoal mimikyu is probably one of the better ones uh, for exactly the same way, reason, like the Trick Room, but like the anti water one, this is probably the safest one. So, Mimikul. 
right? Um, you're just able to go for that swap out of the Torgal into whatever Mon you want, and uh, you're just in a solid spot. And there's also Torkoal Hands, which we already talked about. So let's, yeah, let's go. So one, two, three, four. There's one more. What's the other one? This is the hardest. Like, I always get stuck with this. So we talked about Indy. We talked about Hands. talked about me. We talked about Armor. Oh, yeah, Amoongus. Uh, Amoongus Coal is basically the same thing as, like, the Indy Coal, but, like, worse. So let's put it down here. Um, So it's basically the same thing, but like, you know, you have not as good redirection. So it's, it's no fake out protection either from the terrain. So it's just not as good. All right. So let's see how many weeds we already have here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So there's two more weeds left. What mons do you have to work on? Is it Amoongus? One Amoongus, two Amoongus, three Amoongus. So there's two Amoongus leads. So it's probably like Amoongus hands. Yeah, Moongus Hands is one. We're going to put that. Probably like just a C tier. Fake out Spore into like pivot out and redirection, do whatever. It's not great. Um, but you do have fake out, right? Man, it's just a solid way to do it. And if you're going to be setting like a mid to late game trick room, it's a little bit better. It can be pinned by like a lot of AoE mons. It's not that great versus like... Um, it's, it's probably good against Palance, but it's probably not that good against like just AoE Sun Spam. But it does keep your tools in the back. So it's definitely viable, but I would not recommend it that much. And then it's one more Amoongus lead. What is it? Is it Amoongus Indity? I don't actually mind that because you have double redirection and they don't know where it's going to go. So I'm going to put that in the C tier as well. It's a little bit more match roulette. And so these are weeds that you wouldn't even think of ever going, but we're trying our best to find the positives and see what they can bring to the table. And... The more that you play and understand, what I would highly recommend is just play games on Showdown. And you can look at your opponent's teams, but say, hey, no matter what, I'm going to be going with this one. No matter what, I'm going to be going with this one. Put yourself in a situation where you're already either won or game two. Sorry, you, you're putting yourself in a situation where you already hypothetically won game one or lost game one and see like, how would I go game two to get myself out of the situation and assume they already know my spreads and assume they already know that I could do X, Y, or Z. Force, your, force yourself to play out of these leads so you can better understand what monster to bring in the back to be, out, be able to better punish your opponents. So let's make sure we have 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this is actually all of the leads that this team can, can do. Right? This is all of the different lead combinations that this team can do. Let's make it just a little bit bigger course can't make it like the exact right size let's do it like this then, so we can see all of them at once these are all of the leads this team can do and i think that they're solid i would say for the most part you probably want to open up with an s or a tier lead for game one and then for game two depending if you won game one you can dip into those more aggressive options what i like to do is after winning game one i like to force my opponent to immediately over respect what i'm doing because if i win game one going like standard redirection trick room and then in game two i opt to go with one of those like fake out eruptions or follow me eruption leads even if i lose that game they're the ones that are having to win right there so that should be triggering them to be over aggressive if they have to be over aggressive against like a sash entity or a redirection mon i'm going to be able to trade with them and then set trick when i feel like it again it's that thing i was talking a little bit about force your opponent to win in a way that's not the way that they want to do it if they accidentally throw away one of their pieces early trading and then I bring out like a hands in the late game that they just can't check anymore. That's a game win. Like it took the, it changed the way the matchups worked. And, you know, we won game one through normal play. And we kind of stole game two. And then worst case scenario, if you lose that game, you do know exactly what you need to do for game three. Because now they've revealed even more info about their items, their EV spreads and things like that. And how their play styles go. And you, you know if they're that kind of one trick pony that only has one lead versus trick room. And you know exactly what you should need to do. You know exactly the right monster to bring in the back if you understand how your team works. And the best way to understand how your team works is to understand more about how these leads here uh, can get you those wins in games two and three. So hopefully you liked this little introduction on how to flowchart your leads. You should do this for every single one of your teams and understand everything that these lead options bring to the table and what you need to bring in the back to be able to correctly optimize 
and capitalize on the strengths and weaknesses that each of these brings. So hopefully you like this. If you did like this, think about leaving a like. Remember, we're trying to get to 100 likes. And let me know if you want to see more flowchart content like this so you guys can better understand how to be building your own teams in the future. And don't forget to check out the Patreon. Don't forget to check out the Patreon. Uh, this sort of stuff is open to everyone on the Patreon. Even the $2 tier, the lowest tier, gets access to this sort of stuff. So if you guys want some help with your teams, think about checking it out. Think about supporting me on there. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out, and I'll see you guys next time.